Hi there, it's Dr. Martha Lucas at my podcast, Energy Medicine Woman, which you can listen to on YouTube or Anchor or Spotify and other podcast sites. My website is acupuncturewoman.com. If you need to get in touch with me, my email address is drmlucas at acupuncturewoman.com. So that's Dr. M. Lucas at acupuncturewoman.com. I'm starting a series called Cosmetic Acupuncture Works. And today's topic is going to be what have we been up to over the years with regard to cosmetic procedures, which means we're going to talk about what we, we, and I'm mainly meaning women, although men are catching up now, have been doing out of our obsession for how we look and not only an obsession for how we look, but the obsession to just continue to look younger, to try to prevent aging, which interestingly enough, Chinese medicine is the best aging prevention science you can use. Um, obviously you can't, it's silly even to say prevent aging. You can't prevent aging, then you would be dead. But what you can do is preserve youth. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this series. I'm going to be telling a little, like I said today, what have, what have we been up to? Uh, the next part of the series will be Chinese medicine and beauty, a little bit about the history of that. Then I'll be doing who can benefit by the decade and talk about what cosmetic acupuncture is. One of the episodes will be food in your skin. One of the episodes will be what are the other options out there for your skin to look younger and, and uh, how they work, and then some miscellaneous things to help your skin. But today, we are going to talk about this obsession. It's been around for a very, very long time, and it does kind of seem endless. Uh, I've been noticing on my Facebook feed a ton of weight loss, love yourself better people selling their their classes or whatever. So we know that we still are focused on how we look. And we would like to stay vital, right? Not only young looking, but vital too. If you want to improve your vitality, then again, Chinese medicine is a great choice because our goal in Chinese medicine, the ultimate goal is to prevent illness. People don't come for that a lot. They, they don't start out that way. They come with a symptom. And then we get rid of the symptom and they stay because they feel good and they want to prevent. But the, the goal of Chinese medicine in the beginning would be you're in your 30s and you get something like cosmetic acupuncture to prevent lines and wrinkles instead of us trying to make lines and wrinkles go away. So women have been willing to do really almost anything uh, to look younger. Go under the knife, for example, surgical procedures. You know, when you're anesthetized, one of the possibilities is death. It's a small percentage, but that's why your anesthesiologist makes you sign papers that say, you know, some things can go wrong here. But yeah, we've been gone under the knife, been suctioned, injected, chemically peeled, implanted, dyed, and D-Y-E-D, died, uh, and more to look younger. And as a specialist in this field of cosmetic acupuncture, it always amazes me some of the procedures that women are willing to go through. And maybe, uh, and they tell me about it or show me pictures of it. It's just always amazing. So don't get me wrong. I want to look as young and vibrant as I can also. But there's a way to maintain a healthy young look and it takes action it's a lifestyle um you know we can't just sit back and watch the clock tick by right and say oh i wish i didn't get older we usually have to take some sort of action and one of those actions is the cosmetic acupuncture technique that i teach which is called meizen which means beautiful person Maizen cosmetic acupuncture. So you can use something like that to help you look younger. Um, I also use homeopathic collagen injections, 
but mostly uh, I love the acupuncture needle. The acupuncture needle is the best anti-aging tool out there because we know how deep the dermis is, we know how long the needle is, and we can put it right in the dermis to reinvigorate your collagen and elastin. And, you know, cosmetic acupuncture improves your general health too. If, as long as the practitioner does body points, I do always recommend that uh, the practitioner addresses the internal causes of aging as well as the external, the face, or I also do a neck lift protocol. Sure, those are needles on the neck or the face, but I also address the internal causes of aging. And, you know, people spend billions of dollars on beauty treatments. Uh, it's a very, very big business. And as I said, they're coming up with something new all the day, all, all the time that helps your skin sag less. Or, you know, a big thing now is lip plumping. Make your cheeks and chin more prominent. Lift your eyelids and eyebrows. So the list goes on of the procedures that you can have. Um, I've been interested in this idea of beauty for years when I, I'm a research psychologist who uh, is now a practitioner of Chinese medicine for the last 20 some years. But I did in my research psychology program do a lot of work in social and health psychology. And I also did a section on beauty, attractiveness. One of the research areas was the study of attractiveness. And it's just a psychological fact that perceived attractiveness leads to positive outcomes. So in other words, there's a bias. The more beautiful someone looks, for example, the more likely they are to find a mate or the more likely they are to be con considered intelligent or the more likely they are to be hired for a job. So again, this, this is a, pro a little bit of a problem. We call those attractiveness halo events, effects, meaning uh, the attractiveness halo effect means the perception of attractiveness comes with some other positive attributes like timeliness, intelligence, honesty, and that sort of thing. So that's the fact is that our society has placed an emphasis like that on beauty for a long time. So, and it's been well researched. So it's unfortunate that in cultures like ours, especially ours, really, really does despise the effect of aging. In other words, almost everything associated with getting old is perceived as unwanted and ugly. So there is born the multi-billion dollar, uh, the multi-billion dollar business of trying to erase the effects of aging because it, as I said, everything about quote unquote getting old is despised. So, you know, we think about uh, women and there, there is a lot of opportunity out there or a lot of media now about loving yourself, loving yourself about how you, you know, how you look. But I just wonder how many women actually do that. How many women actually love the way they look? I mean, how many do you know that don't have something about their face that they criticize? How many have said, oh, those lines around my lips, I really wish I didn't have those. Or, oh, my eyes, I, you know, I have so many crow's feet. Well, one of the things is you've done a lot of smiling if you have a lot of crow's feet. So remember, our emotions make our face move and those can lead to lines in certain areas. But there are all kinds of issues women talk about, like, you know, having more than one chin or puffiness under their eyes, age spots, lots and lots of things that uh, can be addressed with cosmetic acupuncture, but also there are other procedures that address them as well. And, but the thing when I think about, you know, not loving yourself as you are, who are we comparing ourselves to anyway? Are we actually comparing ourselves, and the answer is yes for some people, to women on the covers of fashion magazines? I mean, those women are photoshopped. They don't look like that in real life. Obviously, some do, but a lot of images are photoshopped. Um, and, you know, I suppose with enough surgery, plumping up injections, implants, liposuction, permanent makeup, et cetera, et cetera, I guess some of us could look like those women, 
if we had all those procedures. But, you know, it's pretty unlikely, according to research, that any either any of us, any of each of us is going to ever measure up to our current society's definition of beauty. You know, it's beauty is youth, beauty is perfection, beauty is flawless. And that's just not a realistic perception. And then we also need to think about uh, you know, it used to be that older, what I would call older, they're not older, but women in their 60s were generally the people getting facelifts. But now that is getting younger and younger. Women in their 40s are having surgical facelifts, which do not last forever. A surgic, The clock is still ticking, right? The clock is still ticking. You're still out in the sun and your facelift is not going to last forever. So you're going to end up having to have more than one. But this is, I'm very distressed when I hear about women in their 40s asking about facelifts or teenagers wanting some sort of surgery like breast augmentation. I heard a few years ago that that's a very, uh, that's a, a popular in some cities, a popular high school graduation gift. Oh my goodness. So, you know, what we need to be telling our young women, our young daughters and granddaughters is to love themselves and to love their bodies, not be already at 17 or 18 thinking about having surgical procedures. But, you know, this didn't start yesterday. Uh, the word vanity is associated with this obsession, right? And that goes back to the 13th century. Its Latin root is vanitas, which means the quality of being empty or vain. And it is associated with a feeling of being valueless. Now that's important, right? Really, unless you're beautiful, you feel valueless. So, you know, then it branches off, right? Vanity branches off to self-love, conceit, um, excessive pride, and that sort of thing. But, you know, it's interesting that vanitas is like a still life painting that has symbols like skulls and clocks and burning candles and rotten fruit, reminding us of what? Decay, decay equivalent, you know, equalized with aging. And, you know, it also is about the transient nature of life and of pleasure. So, uh, you know, that idea that there would be a still life looking at be static beauty like that, with, like I said, things like rotten fruit and burning candles. So the clock is ticking and your body is going to age. And this series about cosmetic acupuncture, my book, Cosmetic Acupuncture Works, is going to be about the, some natural ways to uh, prevent premature aging. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, that the changes in our appearance can be, you know, they're natural, right? I mean, we're going to get gray hairs, right? Of course, we don't have to keep our gray hair because people, um, you know, just get it dyed. Our skin is going to get drier. It just happens. It, at, in our 30s, our dermis starts to get weaker. Collagen and elastin start to decline. Oil starts to decline. So we start to have skin that's not so smooth and a little more dry. Then we start to get age spots because our melanin, the pigment in our cells, doesn't work as well as it used to. Uh, the fat layer under our skin can become a little thinner and make us our skin look a little loose. So there are things that are going to happen in this these ages, and it's just natural. It's just going to happen. So you know we want to think about ourselves as instead of being willing to do really any crazy thing that comes along to help us look younger, uh, it would be nice if we can start to just appreciate ourselves as we are. But, you know, women have been changing our appearance for thousands and thousands of years. Um, you know, coloring our nails, right? Finger, fingernail painting can be traced back to 3000 BCE. Uh, in China, Women have been for a long time, or had been, lightening their complexion with powder a lot of times. You see a lot of uh, ancient pictures of, of Asian women that their faces are white. They really, really prized uh, the light skin color. And we've used lipsticks forever, shaping our eyebrows, um, 
uh, an ancient, I remember an ancient medical text in Egypt actually had a recipe, excuse me, for a skin rejuvenating acid peel. Now, it was made out of milk and the lactic acid did have some skin smoothing properties. So it wasn't uh, as dangerous as some of the chem or as strong as some of the chemical peels today. But they say that Cleopatra Cleopatra used to travel with a whole supply of donkeys so that she could have access to milk, a milk peel whenever she wanted to. And, you know, they used the Egyptians, when, again, when you see historically, it looked like they used a, dram, a lot of dramatic looking eye makeup. And some of it was natural, like crushed beetle wings used as eyeshadow, but some of it had lead in it, lead, mercury, malachite, and copper, and those, they didn't think of them as dangerous, but of course today we, we have uh, uh, too many regulations to allow something poisonous or dangerous into our makeup. Um, uh, more than 2000 years ago, Greeks and Romans colored their hair using concoctions made out of lead oxide and lime, oh my goodness. So women used to put leeches on their faces to give them a pale complexion. Remember, they wanted to look pale. So yeah, it's, um, it, it's been going on for a long, long time. Uh, some of the less dangerous things were that sometimes women used to wear pretty velvet patches shaped like stars if they had a blemish. So if they had some acne, they would cover it up like that. Um, as I said, they, you know, using things like bleaching your hair with lye or using white paint with lead in it to give yourself um, that light complexion. So, uh, you know, wearing an adhesive patch isn't so dangerous, but putting lye on your head can get to be uh, pretty damaging. But it's that pattern of I'm willing to do anything to look more beautiful. And the problem is, I say this in my cosmetic acupuncture classes, if something goes wrong with a procedure on your face, you can't put a blouse over it. That's right. If I had had some sort of surgery, breast augmentation or some other surgery on my body, I can wear a blouse. But if something goes wrong on your face, you cannot put a blouse over it. Um, so, you know, think about, we're gonna be thinking about these, uh, these um, this series about accepting ourselves. Uh, as I said, we'll look into Chinese medicine for a lot of this. We're gonna do nutrition. And remember, this idea of uh, obsession is not only with our faces, it's with our bodies too. But, you know, uh, it, it's, I think it started, surgery started, I think in the 50s with nose jobs. And then in the 60s, we got breast augmentation, tummy tucks in the 70s. And now, of course, in, we're in 2021 right now, as I am recording this, we've got everything, hair replacement, implants, cheek, cheek and chin implants, uh, Gore-Tex implants, skin peels, skin fillers, almost everything you can even imagine. So uh, what we're gonna do is work on our inner sense of our own beauty and value and talk about natural ways that we can uh, have, have our skin look good, um, maintain our early, like I, I have women who are starting to come to me in their thirties for cosmetic acupuncture because they want to maintain their look. They don't want to have to have procedures 20 years from now. So we'll talk about all that. Again, it's Dr. Martha at acupuncturewoman.com. My email address is drmlucas at acupuncturewoman.com.